thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Fadi. I'm an associate professor and head of AI and robotics lab in a new university. Uh, so uh, mainly in the lab, we are targeting building different robots and uh, AI algorithms uh, or uh, techniques to help uh, in health sector. So for education, uh, we, we deal with the autistic children. We try to uh, build a robot that communicate with, with, the, uh, with these kids. And also we work on rehabilitation system for uh, both stroke patients. Uh, recently we started to, uh, we got the grant from uh, uh, Minister of Education to work on education uh, uh, projects. So we uh, started to uh, find a gaps where we can fit. And today I will explain uh, one of these projects, uh, which mainly using AI for education. Okay, so uh, we, we all know that uh, AI is interfering with all our life recently. Uh, so uh, we, we deal with Siri, we deal with Google Assistant, we deal with Google Map, probably almost every day. Uh, some of us may have Tesla, uh, we use YouTube. Uh, so we are interfering with, with AI almost every day. And uh, uh, also, we know that we are connected to the social media more, we are to connected to, to normal or to, to our society. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, TikTok, taking so much time from us and from our kids. Uh, our kids, whenever they have a, a peak, a little bit uh, uh, free time from their uh, classroom, they just run to YouTube, they, write, they run to TikTok. And the question is why, why actually uh, uh, kids, they really love, and we, we, we are all connected to, to this kind of social media. So we were asking why actually we are all connected. Why my kids is running to YouTube whenever they really have time. Uh, although it's class time, but they, they really run to YouTube. And I guess one, one, one of the speakers, he was talking about, they were running to YouTube all the time. So, uh, we were uh, looking at literature, and it's, uh, it's known that social media know, uh, uh, or the algorithms behind, or AI algorithms behind social media try to, to, to suck you in, bring you in all the time, because it know uh, you better based on your behaviors. It takes two, three hours from TikTok to know who you are and what you like to see. Uh, and then, uh, based on that, it will show you always what you like to see. It will show you what you like to read. Uh, it will try to keep you as much as possible in because we know it works with reinforcement learning which it actually work on uh, the networks there get rewarded by keeping you as much as possible so uh, that's one way of, of uh, uh, bring you or keep you uh, happy <coughs> and we know that social media actually activate uh, reward circuits in your brain by pushing dopamine uh, so it, it keep you happy, relax, and the reason for that because also, uh, of course, it show you what you like to see, what you like to read, but also uh, it give you the immediate reward, give you the, the feeling of immediate reward all the time for your accomplish. It, it give you relief, stress relief because uh, you can freely talk about yourself and about your accomplished uh, uh, stuff without uh, uh, direct judgment from people around. And uh, you feel it gives you special attention, especially for kids, because uh, they can freely select what they would like to see without uh, uh, um, attention from uh, uh, their parents. Okay, and uh, so it's kind of personalization. I mean, we like social media because we feel it is, uh, we have a control on it. It shows us what we really like to, to see. And this is what uh, AI actually uh, give to this kind of social media. So we are trying to, to carry this kind of uh, uh, experience into education system. How we build an education system that suck people in and let kids enjoy learning. Uh, okay, so here's an example of, uh, uh, I mean, one-to-one -one, uh, learning. Uh, so here we have uh, what we need for a successful one-to-one -one learning. We need uh, an expert uh, 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 teacher who has uh, or uh, who has the yeah, uh, communication skill uh, can listen, can understand the kids, uh, and adapt the curriculum based on uh, uh, what they like. 
So it's basically try to understand, uh, oh sorry, yeah, so uh, try to understand uh, the, the kids, uh, try to give him immediate reward, uh, judge, uh, uh, less judgment, of course, so the, the kids in this case feel more freedom to talk, more freedom to explain himself, or express himself without uh, being worried. So that's why kids maybe uh, they are more attached or they like the one-to-one -one classroom more than uh, going to school. And uh, so based on these keywords, actually, okay. So based on that, uh, it's actually it's hard for for teacher in the classroom. To, to manage that, I mean, to, to give attention for uh, kids in the classroom, especially if the classroom is more than 40 or 50 kids. So it's difficult to understand each kid's interest, uh, what they like, what they don't like, if they are giving attention, if they are actually engaged or not, uh, uh, what they feel, uh, if they really uh, feel interest about the, the, the class or the topic or not. So all this is hard for one instructor to know and uh, uh, our target is actually to, to find where we can pick up from AI tools to bring in the classroom to give that to the instructor because when the instructor feel more confident about that the students actually giving him attention uh, and what he's talking about is interest for the students, then that will give him more confidence to give more and the students will feel more special to engage more. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so we know that uh, there are many advanced technology related to uh, uh, computer vision and uh, many recent research has developed different kind of techniques for uh, uh, well-trained uh, uh, neural network for uh, computer vision, thanks for deep learning uh, techniques. Uh, and because also we have uh, a good quality cameras in our phones and, and web cameras also, they, we, we, we have a very high uh, tech webcam. So because of that, uh, uh, we can actually uh, have algorithms for face detections and recognitions, very well algorithms. Uh, we have algorithms for understanding body language, especially using 3D cameras. We have algorithms for emotion detections, and all these algorithms with very high accuracy. And also, uh, we have uh, research done in speech, emotion recognitions, and NLP, which is natural language processing. So we can uh, estimate the emotion of people, not only from their faces, but from the tune of their uh, voice. Uh, from the text or the words they are using, we can, we can know how much uh, they, they, they feel happy or anger or uh, sad. So uh, our target is actually to use these kind of uh, branches or tools of AI, including machine learning, NLP, uh, vision, speech, uh, expert system, and robotics, bring them together and pick up which one of these can be used in classroom to, to facilitate the, the uh, things uh, for the, the instructors. So our vision is actually, as explained as, as shown here, is to use different AI technologies, use a high quality camera in the classroom, use a high qu uh, quality mic in the classroom so we can do analysis, monitor, monitor the students' behaviors uh, during the class, associate that behaviors with the uh, behavior of the instructors, and uh, build kind of, uh, uh, and it work that will help the an instructor to, or it will give him a recommendation of what to do at what time when the students feel less interest or when the students feel uh, more uh, engaged, etc. So this is our vision, and of course to 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 success on this vision, there are many challenges that we need to handle. We need to find a way to monitor the students in the best way, monitor the instructors in the best way, transfer these informations between the students and the instructors and show the instructor a very well, uh, 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 less complicated uh, heat map or analysis that the instructor can adjust his teaching technique based on what he see uh, from these uh, analysis. So that's the, the problem we're trying to solve, and we solve it so far with three different ways. So one of the research directions uh, which I'm working on is uh, try to uh, build a database. 
to train uh, deep neural networks. So we, we tried to, uh, uh, we recorded different classroom and we annotate or uh, uh, build the classes based on uh, students when they are focused, when they're giving attention, uh, when they're engaged, when they are playing around or when, when they're playing in the phones, uh, when they fall up with writing, when they are asleep or bored. So all these were annotated in, the, uh, in our database and we train. We collected around 5,000 images for each of these. We collect that from internet, from YouTube, or from our classes. And then we train the, the network to be able to understand this in real time. We also look at the emotions, sad, happy, uh, neuter, uh, anger, surprise, and we add that in the system. So the idea is that uh, at real time, uh, the camera can analyze what's going on in the classroom and show that uh, to the instructor in real time. Uh, we're still working on how to show that because we have a way to, uh, uh, to show that in real time for the instructor, like who is giving attention, who's not. Or we are also applying a uh, heat map and we are doing kind of survey between instructors to see which one is more informative. Uh, it's just because we need one look from the instructor to that screen uh, to give him as much possible information for him to engage him more with the students or to know that what he's talking about is really not interesting or it should be more interesting. Uh, I mean, he should give, the, give a break or give them a discussion time or et cetera. So this is one of the projects we, we are working on. Uh, so we, we mainly hardly work in collecting database and train deep neural network uh, to understand these different behaviors. Another project we worked on is uh, uh, that depends on, on uh, how much the students giving attention through their uh, face orientation and also question answer. So if the uh, instructor is asking one question and if a uh, student is uh, raising arm and trying to answer that, it will count as engaged of the classroom. Uh, those students who are not uh, engaged, they will be, count, will be uh, highlighted in red and green means they are fully attended. So you can see the whole classroom attention level and each of the students in the classroom and who's absent, who's there, who's less attention and who's more in timeline and in a very simple uh, uh, platform. So we're working on this, uh, we work on, on this uh, uh, study too. And we also work on a bit different that that study is done in autistic children. So uh, we try to know uh, each children uh, interested topic. So the idea is here we were monitoring the students in the classroom and uh, the robot basically go into different stories uh, and then uh, he can or the robot can pick up uh, which of these students uh, give more interest at X story. For example, you talk about colors, you talk about uh, families, you talk about flowers, you talk about cars, and the students, of course, they give attention, no attentions, and we try to associate which part the students give more attention, they, they show more happiness, they engage in the question and answer, and then we build kind of database for each student. And then we use this database to uh, recommend, uh, I mean, uh, we, were, we are connected to Google, so for example, if you talk about colors and these students like colors, then you tell them story more about colors. I mean, story that has color on it, different than a story that has car on it. Uh, so we are working on this uh, directions too, and was tested in uh, autistic children. Uh, here we have uh, three or four uh, factors to identify the interest of the students. We were looking at uh, uh, attention based on uh, eye contact. We were looking at the joint attentions based on, based on that we both talk about the same concept. We, talk, we, we also look at the sound, uh, which means that I ask questions and he reply within uh, less than a second. And we look at the uh, uh, emotions. So if I'm saying something funny, he's supposed to laugh. Yes, and uh, the whole idea or uh, our project is actually also to include IoT in this kind of uh, uh, scenarios. So uh, the system will try to learn from one classroom the, 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 the relationship between the instructor actions and the student's response and try to uh, build like a, a recommendation system for beginner uh, instructors. So 
if he see that uh, noisy classroom, uh, maybe the system will show him what kind of uh, possible actions that he can do to uh, uh, let them uh, be quiet. And this will be, uh, at the beginning, the system, of course, will know nothing, but it will learn from different classroom. Maybe one of these classroom will have uh, an expert teacher. The system will learn from his actions and response of the students, and will try to push that recommendations to other classroom. And the, it will also uh, either uh, enhance this kind of uh, actions or it will try to fade it down. Uh, yes, so that's all for uh, what we are doing at the AI Robotics Lab. Thank you.